So I was playing some Ghost Recon Wildlands, you know, when I started to notice that I was getting some weird graphical glitching on the terrain and whatnot. And so, you know, I decided to open my MSI after burner and lo and behold, I'm noticing temperatures between like, you know, the 77, 78. I've even seen a few 80 Celsius up there. So yeah, it's kind of getting a bit hot. It's a good thing then that we have this guy to check out. A liquid cooling loop for GPUs by ID Cooling. So this is my graphics card, the MSI NVIDIA GTX 970 100ME and I've been using it for a couple of years now. I've never actually had problems with it until recently when I started to notice that I was getting some you know, graphical artifacts in games like Ghost Recon Wildlands and Divinity 2. And when I checked, the temperatures were spiking all the way up to about 80 Celsius and it would start throttling. I, I don't know, maybe it's the mixture of Malaysia's weather at the moment sitting at a toasty 30 degrees Celsius, or maybe it's just the aging cooler of this card. You know, it's got a good four years on it after all. But either way, it was either I got myself a new graphics card or I tried to cool this guy off. So, I mean, we all follow the news. RTX series from Nvidia just got announced not that long ago and we're all waiting to get our hands on benchmark and numbers before we make our decisions. And so I wanted to wait and see if I was going to get one of these new cards as well. And then I thought, well, why not I try liquid cooling this? But, you know, conventional methods of liquid cooling require you to get a GPU block that is mostly designed only for that series of cards and, you know, can't really be brought over from, let's say, if you decided to go AMD after Nvidia, you know, vice versa, between board partners like MSI or ASUS or even just from generation from generation. That means that while they do cool, exceedingly well, they make for really quite shabby investments since they do cost a lot and you need to get yourself tubing, a pump and a radiator and a reservoir, right? So what if there was a cheaper way to do this though? What if we could bring this solution forwards with us regardless of whatever card we decide to use in the future? Hmm. Enter the ID Cooling Frost Flow 120 VGA. So let's take a look at that unit that will be sitting on top of our GPU. It's pretty bare bones as far as design goes with a pump head and a secondary fan to cool the VRMs with two cables sticking out of the unit respectively, SATA power for the pump head and a 3-pin power for the VRM fans. Specs wise, it's rated to push about 96 liters per hour and that fan beside it spins at a top speed of 2000 RPMs with the whole lot rated at a noise level of 25 decibels. In operation, the pump head is, you know, audible but not that loud. As far as GPU support goes, it should support nearly all of uh, Nvidia's graphics cards out there, though AMD support seems slightly sparse with only the uh, R300 and R200 series listed. It's obviously best if you're using a reference design as well, but there's a chance of course that it still might mount and work just fine, just, you know, no guarantees for that. Unfortunately, the 315mm long tubes aren't sleeve though, but the 120mm radiator should be perfectly fine to cool a GPU. There are other variants with much larger radiators, but I feel that a 120mm rad should be more than sufficient, given how power efficient graphics cards are these days. Taking a look at that bundled fan, it bears the model number of HA1225L12F-Z, though this bears more closer resemblance to the CF12025-W, and that has a totally different spec sheet altogether. 
Anyway, based on the original listing then, they've got a fan speed of 700 to 1500 RPM, a max flow rate of 62 CFM, and a max static pressure of 3.2 mm H2O at a noise peak level of 26.4 decibels. The fans of the blades themselves are interesting as they've got 8 of them and they're full of holes and grooves all over, perhaps to cut down on wind noise and turbulence. As expected, of course, they have rubber dampeners on the corners, but no, no RGB this time around, just good old fashioned white. How do they sound like in operation? Well, I'm glad you asked. Have a listen. A bit too loud for my taste to be honest and I don't think that it's actually 26.4 decibels but you know what I suppose if it pushes a good amount of air it can be forgiven. Does it? Running my wind test the results weren't all that great. I mean given the noise levels there are definitely more silent fans out there and their lack of ability to really push air through the radiator is really a concern point for me. Now the part that we've all, including myself, have been waiting for, getting it installed onto my MSI GTX 970-100ME. Honestly, getting it installed was pretty easy. All it took was to remove the existing cooler, install the mounting bracket for said new cooler, install heat sinks for the RAM and MOSFETs, new thermal paste, thread it, and then secure it. I also didn't encounter any clearance issues despite my card being a non-reference custom design, unlike my experiences with getting it to mount with the Hunter Duet 2 that I reviewed before, so that's a very good thing. Thermos are compared against the original cooler of course and I ran the Unigine Superposition Performance Benchmark on my monitors, native resolution of 2560 by 1080 with the shaders set on extreme and the textures on high. The numbers that the Frostflow 120 VGA were getting were a good 11.2 degrees Celsius less on idle and a massive 26.8 celsius less on load. What this means was that where the Twin Frozer 5 cooler was getting 77 celsius and beyond during gaming, the ID Cooling Frostflow 120 VGA was doing a cool 50 celsius and never going over it. You might know that this kind of solution isn't really all that unique. You can of course buy one of those NZXT Kraken G12 mounts and if you have an Ace Attack based liquid cooler lying around, like of course the ones made by NZXT themselves, you can use the combination of the two and liquid cool your GPU. But here's the thing right, that solution itself has a limitation. Alright, see, a standard CPU cooler has their tubing coming out, you know, perpendicularly to the pump block itself, meaning on the top of it. 
If you have an enclosure with pipe tolerances like mine, that kind of solution doesn't work all that well as it interferes with the intake fans down below. You can of course press them down to have better clearance, but I don't like the tubes coming out of the rear of the card either since I mount the radiator to the rear of the case and it also introduces more clearance issues. This kind of overall solution isn't that cheap either. This is because even in the cheapest case scenario, it requires you to have an unused cooler lying around that is of an Acetec design or shell out 60 US dollars for a Corsair Hydro A55 or a Thermotake Water 3.0 Performer or one of NZXT's you know, liquid cooling loops and those aren't all that cheap either. And on top of that, another 30 US dollar for a mounting bracket. That makes it a total of 90 USD minimum. What about this ID cooling solution though? Well, 160 ringgit, 39 US dollars. Heck, it can even go lower. Yeah, let that sink in. You know, I'm actually finding it hard to pick a negative point out of this product as well. I mean, I don't really like the fan provided, but that's easily changed. And if you're anything like me, you have a collection of other high performance fans that can easily take its place. I guess if I had to nitpick, one of the other things that I could pick at is maybe I would like to see less cables sticking out of the GPU unit, maybe using a 3-pin header instead of the SATA power plug, or maybe consider consolidating the pump and VRM fan connector into a single plug. But that's a really, really small minor point. You want to know another plus side as well? Pretty much no matter what GPU I get in the future, I can just go for the cheapest option in terms of the cooling provided, as regardless of whatever I choose, it can and probably will be replaced by the Frostflow 120 VGA. So yeah, I think it's a damn good product and not just that, it's an investment that might even save you a couple of bucks in the future because you don't have to rely on a board partner cooler anymore. Your future is pretty much always going to be liquid cooled. Highly recommended. So that's it for this video. Another day, another liquid cooling loop. I really don't know how soon my curiosity for testing CLCs will stop. But in the event that it doesn't, you can be sure that I'll be up here doing a video on it. So like if you like it, dislike it if you didn't, stay subscribed and notified. My name is Yang and I'll catch you guys in the next video.